Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Welcome to our youth worship service. Please stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for our feet shall stand up. And he said unto me, Let us go in the house of the Lord, our feet shall stand by within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than thou. I would rather be a doorkeeper to the house of my God. Welcome to the temple. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that have planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation in thy place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O dream to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth to sing praises. Lift us our voices and sing, all to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. All I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but, but wholly lean on Jesus' name.
God, thank you for bringing us together to, to focus on you and learn about your word. Help us to come close to your, your heart and learn about who you are. Thank you. Thank you for our church family and friends. Lord, I ask you to watch over all of the students and teachers in our school near and far. Lastly, fill us with your love. Amen. Today's scripture comes from John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Good morning, Mount Zion. Here are our announcements for today. On the third Sunday in September, we're asking all auxiliaries and ministries to remain at the service to take pictures for the Northeast Conference Souvenir Journal. This comes from the annual conference committee. On Saturday night, Cabin Fever, the Pegasus, come aboard the most fabulous cruise ship in the vicinity. On Saturday, September 14th at I'm sorry, the door opens at 2.30, dinner at 3 o'clock, show, show at 4 p.m. Tickets are $55 each. Um, this will be located at 1951 Pisco Road here in Florence. Please save the date. Our next announcement for today comes from our Pastors Appreciation Committee, and it reads, you're, as you already know, it is our custom to share gifts of love with our pastor and his wife prior to the annual conference. Therefore, the members of the Pastor's Aid Ministry are asking every member to pre come prepared the third Sunday in September, which is September the 15th, to present our love offerings to Reverend Dr. Jonathan Green and Mrs. Hope Green. Special envelopes for the contribution are now available in the narthex. Next announcement, this comes from the male chorus. Today is one of those days you've always been waiting for. The 31st anniversary of the male chorus is here. So rest your feet, eat a little something, take a nap, and come back at 5 p.m. this afternoon to praise the Lord. Thank you so much for the male chorus. Are there any visitors with us today who would like to be acknowledged? Any visitors, if you will stand, the ushers will bring you a mic if you'd like to be acknowledged. My name is Mamie Gaston. I'm a member of Greater St. James AME Church in Lake City, South Carolina, where the Reverend Crummy, Richard Crummy, is the pastor. I'm visiting my family today, my brother, Anthony Burgess, Vanessa, and Ebony Burgess. Good morning. My name is Gloria McClam. I, too, am a member of Greater St. James AME Church in Lake City. I am happy to be with you this morning in support of your speaker, Ebony Burgess. Good morning, my name is Willie Mae Jones, and this is my sister Viola, my sister Dolores, sister, and my sister Hattie, and Elaine, sister Elaine. And we are here to support Ebony, and we are members of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church in Lake City, Pastor Nathaniel Wilson. And Melinda in the back.
On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jonathan Green, our First Lady, Ms. Hope Green, and the members of Mount Zion AME Church, we thank you for joining us on today and welcome you to come back at any time. Thank you so much and have a good day. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're just glad to be here today, let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> amen. Amen. We want to take this opportunity to thank those that are visiting and those that thought it not a robbery to come and uh, to support uh, Sister um, Ebony. Uh, thank you for making the sacrifice to come all the way from the city of Lake, the Lake City. Amen. Sister Gloria, um, don't you have a position in the AME Church? You want to tell them what your position is since I know you come to support, but uh, since you're part of the lay leadership. Amen. Amen. And so, um, and she has worked with us in the past to have done a number of things uh, with the organized uh, lay. And so I'm sure you will uh, see her again. Let me uh, take this opportunity to, um, to thank the members of Mount Zion um, who uh, came to uh, celebrate one of our own on last night. Amen. Other than wearing all that red, we had a good time. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and the members came to celebrate Whitney Houston, I mean, Sister Eva, um, uh, as uh, she's winding down her eight years of uh, dedicated service to the Northeast Conference Women's uh, Missionary Society. And so we want to thank you for those that came and for those um, that prayed. I think it was last Sunday uh, was her birthday, and so on last night, um, they brought out this uh, big uh, birthday cake. And so um, they want to share it with everyone who's here today. And so there will be birthday cake uh, in the chapel immediately following um, morning uh, worship. And so we ask that you participate and take a part of that celebration. It is at this time and this uh, moment, and as I was getting ready to, to go to the uh, altar, um, I look and see uh, one of the Porpa Hearts recipients who's here sitting on the front row, amen, who, who had been hospitalized, but he's in church today. Somebody ought to say thank you. Amen. The Lord's name be praised. There ain't no secret what God can do. Amen. When we put our hands in God's hand, God will certainly see us through. And it is at this particular moment uh, that we get an opportunity to come to the altar to tell God thank you uh, for uh, the blessings that he's bestowed upon us. And I know that not all of you who have come to this altar have prayed just for yourself, but you've come and you have stood in the gap and you have called on the name of a husband or a wife a brother or a sister, a mother or a father or some child. And so we ask that you come now as the choir of musicians play, as the ushers come. This is your opportunity just to come and have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about it as we tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Whatever it is that we have, God can heal. Some call him Jehovah Rapha, which simply means that God is a healer. There is no failure in God.
whatever it is that he said that he is going to do, he will keep his promise. He is a promise keeper, a way maker, a heart fixer.
I love you, Jesus. I will worship and adore you. Lord, I, I love you more than anything. Thank you for waking me up this morning and starting me on another day's journey. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you, Lord, for being so good and so kind. Now, Lord, send your anointing. Bless us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. And we'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. 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 Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's, let's give the Lord. If you really love him, come on. Come on, put your hands if you really love him. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I was mentioning earlier about uh, the Lord having his hands on uh, Brother Wallace and him being here this morning. And before I present the uh, speaker of the hour, uh, her daddy, Brother Anthony, knows something about the Lord having his hands on you. And so we are grateful to see him today and know that the Lord <laughs> has blessed him. And, uh, and so it is uh, customary on this uh, second Sunday of every month that our, our youth, and for the last few Sundays, we've had our young adults uh, come and to be a blessing uh, to us. And so today is no different. Uh, we have with us one of our very own, uh, Sister Ebony Burgess, uh, who is the daughter of Anthony and Vanessa, Vanessa Bur Burgess. And she is a graduate of Wilson High School the class of 2016. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, she went on to matriculate to Francis Marion uh, University uh, where she earned a bachelor's degree. And, uh, and during the summer, uh, she came and uh, along with our other graduates uh, as she celebrated her MBA from Landon University. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> And so she says she enjoys traveling, dancing, and spending time with her nieces and nephews. Uh, she's currently residing in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, where she's employed with the South Carolina Technical College System as an apprenticeship implementation specialist. Uh, she strives to encourage, motivate, and offer better job opportunities for young people. Her favorite scripture comes from Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans or the thoughts that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And so it is her personal mantra is to expect nothing and to appreciate everything. And so, Sister Ebony comes as a daughter of this church. You all know her. And we ask that we will continue to encourage her that the Lord will use her in a mighty way. And so after the choir has blessed us with the selection, the next voice you would hear will be Sister Ebony Burgess. Let's give her a hand clap of encouragement. <laughs>
to God on this morning. Thank you, Reverend Green, Mrs. Green, Mount Zion, church family and friends for allowing me to speak on this morning. On this morning. Um, thank you to my family who came to support me on this morning. They always know when to show up and show out. <laughs> thank you to my parents, my biggest supporters. Um, they told me this past weekend, Ebony, you can't be in every dog fight. <laughs> and this weekend, I think I learned that lesson. This morning, my topic is on 
in with the out, in with the new. As I continue to mature and enter this new chapter in my life, I've grown to understand the importance of the decisions I make and the choices I choose. They will follow me for the rest of my life. My responsibilities have grown tremendously and I contemplate whether or not I need to ignore them. I recently started a new career path in a new city away from what's comfortable and easy. Everything I was used to, I have to leave behind. This transition is not easy. I still find myself in a mental bind on whether or not I made the right move, the right decision for me. But then I'm reminded why I was offered this new opportunity in a new city, away from what I was used to. Two years ago, I entered in the educational field. I was the youngest African-American woman in my department of health sciences. I was a threat to most and hated by many. There weren't many opportunities of growth for, offered to me in the stage of my career, so I was told. I dedicated my time, hard work, long hours just to be overlooked, underestimated, and told I was too young. See, the Bible says in Jeremiah 1.7, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. I later, learned, I later learned I was no longer welcomed and the devil wanted me out the way. The devil doesn't want to see you grow. He wants to keep you below. I went through this mental turmoil in the workplace for two years and my two week notice. At this stage in my life, my relationship with God was not the same. In fact, I started to make excuses, ignore, and even lie to myself about what was happening in my life. When I received that phone call about my offer letter, I called both my parents. One said, girl, no it didn't. And the other said, well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Little did they know I was running from something. I was in denial, and I hated the journey my life was taking. My stress levels grew, that true smile was hidden, and I distanced myself from God and good people and started welcoming in the bad. This young, educated, beautiful woman standing in front of you today <coughs> forgot herself and forgot God. I want to tell you a little story about the life of an eagle. See, eagles can live up to 70 years because they're mentally capable and physically stronger than any other bird. After 40 years, that eagle has a choice to make. That choice is a matter of life or death. After 40 years, an eagle's claws are no longer as sharp and keen. Its beak becomes bent and blunt, and its feathers become too thick and overbearing. At this point in the eagle's life, he can no longer survive. So he has two options, either die or go through a traumatic experience, a difficult transition. That transition requires the eagle to go into the mountains. Remind you, the eagle is not as strong as it was 20 years ago. Once the eagle reaches the mountain, it must first crush its beak on the hardest rock known to man. When its beak falls, a new one grows in. Now here's why crushing the beak first is important. With that new beak, the eagle can rip out its old claws and new ones can grow in. The eagle needs claws in order to hunt. Then the eagle can pluck out its old feathers. You know, the same old feathers that weigh you down, the same old friends that don't want to see you grow. The eagle gets rid of those feathers and new ones grow in. This journey for the eagle can last 150 days, but afterwards, the eagle has a chance at a new life. The eagle has a chance to live another 30 to 40 years. I'm gonna to talk to the young people for a minute. Sometimes we need to get rid of our old selves in order for a new and better version of ourselves to emerge. 
We got to get rid of the old beats, throw away those bad habits. Those unuseful claws can't help us anymore. We need to block those friends. Do away with those overbearing feathers. I left that job that said I was too young, inadequate, uneducated to hold a, a leadership position. The new move for me, away from what I was used to, was God's way of preparing me for my transition. Young people, you are going to experience times where you have to pluck out your old feathers and allow God to bless you with new ones. The old me was no longer working for me. It was no longer working in my favor. The old me forgot to pray. The old me forgot to call on the God, God's name. I fell and didn't know how I would get back up. I cried many nights and wondered if anybody could hear me. But I went to the mountains and I called out the Lord's name. I got rid of those things and people that keep me from a strong relationship with God. I threw away those old feathers. I threw away what was holding me back. I'm a new ebony, and by the grace of God, I can share this testimony. Aww. Young people, be out with the old so God can bless you to be new. Thank you. Thank you, Ebony, for being transparent and sharing with us that there ain't no secret what God can do. And, and it's really wasn't for the young uh, people. Some, some old people need to, need to pull up out some feathers. You, you got some old feathers you need to get rid of. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Sometimes God puts us in situations and predicaments that we may be tried by the fire, but then to come out as pure gold. Those things, Sister Ebony, is not to make us bitter, but to make us better. And for that, I believe God has made you better. The hymn writer says that whatever it is that we are going through, we got to learn how to give it all to Jesus and surrender as you stand to your feet today there may be some friends some feathers some things that you need to get rid of Jesus said it this way he says take this yoke upon me and learn for my yoke is easy and my burden is like he, he will lighten your heavy load so the doors of the church are open will there be one as the choir lead us all you gotta make it personal give it all to him If you don't know him as Savior, if you don't know him as Redeemer, if 
you don't know him as healer, come on and give it to him. I did tell y'all the second verse is my favorite one. All. Forsake those things. Those things are not important. Take. Take me, Jesus. Come on, sing it like you mean in church. Sometimes we get born, yes we do, but I 
announcements before we uh, leave. Uh, the first announcement I want to make is uh, for the gospel choir to remain. I want to take a picture of the gospel choir. Also, um, for the YPDs to take their picture. Um, Brother Coleman said for y'all to take a nap. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Um, if y'all want to come back to the program. And I got any Dallas Cowboy fans in here? Good. That's a perfect opportunity for y'all to come and get your worship on before you get disappointed tonight. So y'all come, y'all come out to church. You hear? Amen. Let's give Sister Ebony another hand clap of praise by allowing the Lord to use her in a mighty way. Amen. We're going home when you stand the Apostles' Creed. to him who is able to keep you from falling who can present you faultless before his presence of his exceeding glory to our God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore We're going to ask the YPD and the male uh, ushers to come as well. 